The child of day and the child of night despised each other and initiated a war since the age of myth that is now dragged onto humans and is yet to be concluded. The story begins with a bank heist led by this huge villain dressed as clown. The police are in pursuit to gain charge of the situation but in the air, standing on a giant floating circus ball, is Ralph, welcoming everyone to his show. By smashing that ball in the ground, he instantly got rid of all the officers on ground. Clown Ralph is a rank of villain with skills of spreading chaos. An officer tried to shoot Ralph but using his pin shot, Ralph mercilessly killed him. An overspeeding school bus reaches outside the bank. Driven by a masked man, this bus is their escape plan. Two of the robbers embark bus holding a young woman and her child taken as hostage, who were then identified as the governor's wife and child. The woman was begging them to let go of their child and one of the robbers was about to hit her when the masked driver intervened. Eyes filled with anger, he asks them to let go of both of them. In this world, some people have special abilities that make them superhumans. These superhumans sometimes use their power to fulfill personal greed and are classified as villains. These villains have the blood of Night Child. On the other hand, those who oppose the villains and use their abilities to help people have the blood of Day's child. These people are called psychers. The robber tries to attack Masked Man and he easily defeats them and throws one of them out of the bus just as Ralph was about to step one. This Masked Man reveals his face and turns out to be an S-rank psyker with flame skill named Cashin Lee. Ralph is terrified to see Cashin in front of him as he was defeated by him a year ago too but he managed to escape. With a strong and a bit scary smile on his face, Cashin warns Ralph and this time he is going to burn every one of them. The scene shifts to a news channel that is reporting about the bank heist and that even though the robbery attempt failed, Cashin is being criticized for using brutal force by Commission of Human Rights. Cashin is now subjected to penalty and the issue is forwarded to Lampas, the National Psyker Organization. Cashin is called to the Washington branch of Lampas by Tuppence Schiller, an S-rank lady psyker with light skill. In her office, she criticizes Cashin on acting rashly which resulted in public defamation and Ralph also managed to escape, again. Cashin still sees nothing wrong in what he did and tried to justify himself. Acting carelessly in presence of hostage made the matters worse for Cashin and he was advised to act like a psyker and not villain. He was put under probation for not making the right decision and being full of himself. Cashin leaves the office of Schiller, also known as the Steel Tower Witch and thinks to himself how Jeff managed to be best friends with such a rude person. His phone starts to ring and it's a call from Jeff who asks him to immediately come see him in Rhodes, Greece. Cashin takes the earliest flight and upon reaching Rhodes, he waits for Jeff in a cafe, thinking how it has been six months since they last met. Jeff was like his brother from their days together in the HC orphanage. Jeff could make dummies and move them with his skill as if the dummies were alive. Cashin used to idolize Jeff and they mostly spent time together until Cashin moved to America. The cafe closed and Jeff hasn't shown up yet nor picking up the calls. Just when Cashin was about to leave, he heard someone call him from behind. As Cashin turned around, he was shocked. It was Jeff, injured so bad that he could hardly stand. Before Cashin could ask any detail, he handed a necklace to him and asked him to leave, immediately. All confused, Cashin takes out his phone to call the ambulance but before he could do so, he saw someone approaching them. Jeff pushes him away and tries to attack the masked person approaching them but with one slash of his sword, that man beheaded Jeff right in front of Cashin. Smeared with frustration, Cashin chases the killer to a cliff at Seaside where Cashin had him cornered. Cashin asked him why and on whose orders he did that, no matter what answer he gets, Cashin was determined on burning him to death. The man removed his mask and he was not a villain but an S-rank psyker, Jack. Cashin did not expect a familiar face behind the mask. Jack told him that the reason Jeff was killed was because he was a traitor and he killed his comrade. His allegation was backed by another person who appeared from Cashin's behind. This person was Leela, an S-rank psyker with ice skill, who told him that there were evidence and chief executives of Lampas also confirmed it and that Cashin was also being suspected. Jeff had never killed anyone in 10 years, so Cashin did not buy their story proceeded to attack them, landing a strong punch on Jack that he barely dodged. Cashin was easily taking on both of them until one of the two other psychers that Leela warned about took action and sniped Cashin. Refusing to surrender, Cashin made a fire blast as diversion and jumps in the water. Unfortunately, he was sniped again and as he went deeper in the water, the bubbles start to fade out until everything turned black. The last thing Cashin saw was the necklace Jeff gave him, shining. The scene shifts and we see an unconscious boy with his face in the toilet, waking up. To our surprise, this boy is also wearing the same necklace Cashin had when he was drowning. This person is Cashin in someone else's body. The last thing he remembers was falling from the cliff and now waking up in a younger high school boy's body has him all confused. He also has all the memories of this South Korean boy, Kwan Kang-woo, who was just bullied in the school washroom. 
looking for answers, he hears a voice. This voice belongs to Moros, an ancient noble spirit that came out of his pendant. He was the one who saved him and brought him to Korea. He told Kashin that Jeff passed it on to him to protect him and that when he was killed, he was looking for the exterminator sword Mark. This great sword was created during the war in the Age of Myth. Kashin denies to believe anything without proof even though Moros had to sacrifice half of his power to revive Kashin. Using Quan's phone, Kashin finds the article that stated Kashin was indulged in conspiracy to receive black money, and Lampas initiated an operation to assassinate him. It further stated that top-class psyker Kashin was successfully assassinated but during the battle, Jeff Malik was killed by Kashin. Raging in anger, Kashin could not get a hold of his feelings and that awakened his new combat form. Then we are shown the bullies who left Quan in the toilet unconscious. They sent a kid to look in the toilet as they were informed that Quan is not breathing. The kid comes back saying there's no one there. Seeing that there's nothing to worry about, they take a sigh of relief and decide to find him again, and this time, give him an even more intense beating. Kashin panicked and ran to the rooftop of campus without letting anyone notice his unusual form. He couldn't absorb the reality that he, an S rank X psyker is now a villain. Moros shares that he was destined to die but he survived and turned into a villain with the potential of bringing the apocalypse. This was originally Kang's fate but now that fate is passed on to Kashin. For now, Kashin could control the malicious intent that resides in him but as his rage increases, the control will weaken. Moros tried to calm him down when Kashin started questioning his survival by reminding him what Jeff would have wanted. Despite knowing that his death is approaching, Jeff did not escape and sacrificed himself so Kashin lives. Therefore, Kashin should not let his sacrifice go to waste. Once calmed and back to his original form, Kashin was curious about Moro's real identity. Moro's replies that Kashin will learn all about him once they find the exterminator sword which is also linked to Jeff somehow. Seeing Kashin alone, the bullies ambushed him on the rooftop. In the building on the other side, was a trainee psyker Achen Kim, with flame skill, walking in the corridor when he saw through window, the bullies with a bat on the rooftop. His sharp intuition gave him the idea that something is wrong there. Meanwhile, the bullies were about to attack Kashin. Through Kang's memories, Kashin had already recognized them and was having no intention of going easy on them. Knowing how strong villains are, even in their human form, Kashin gives bullies a chance to run away and save themselves. This triggered them and one of them approaches Kashin but before he could attack, Kashin knocks him down with a single punch. The one with bat rushes as well but one punch and he was fell unconscious too. Kashin tries to guide the third one with, who was the gang leader, to avoid bullying anyone in future but he was one stubborn guy therefore Kashin decides to knock some conscious into him. Kashin makes sure that this retarded guy does not fall in one hit so he hits him in the stomach, twice. Barely able to stand, Kashin picks him up and as he was about to deliver the third blow, Uchin arrived. Kashin turns to him and using this window, the bully tried to attack from behind but receives a hard kick and before Kashin could go on to teach him a lesson, Uchin tries to grab him. Kashin was already angry enough, so he attacks him as well, but Uchin blocks it and goes for a counter, Kashin dodges with a slight scratch on his face. Moros, who can only be seen by Kashin, warns him that Uchin is a trainee psyker, hence strong. Uchin breaks the fight saying nothing good will come out of it and hands him a bandage for the scratch. Kashin takes it and leaves while Uchin is surprised how a single boy took down three huge guys. Using the computer at library, Kashin tries to access his psyker account but it was already deleted by Lampas. Later, Kashin asks Moros how he knew that Uchin was a psyker and he tells that when he touched Kashin, Moros sensed his power. With Eye of Insight, he can figure out more detailed information than he asks Kashin to turn into his villain form, so he can analyze him. Kashin was not interested but decides to go on with it. Moros shares that villains cannot control the five desires and seven emotions every human has and in Kashin's case, it was his anger that triggers him to turn into a villain. By picturing the memories he has with Jeff and what Lampas did to Jeff and tried to frame him for that, Kashin turns into his dangerous, yet cool, villain form. Uchin's trainer, Li Di Wum, a B-rank psyker with physics skill, shares the details about a villain goes by the name Blaster. He derives pleasure from blowing things up and viewing the result of his actions. Yesterday, he was smuggled into Korea was seen in Gatam district today. He has already claimed 102 lives. His close-range combat skills are not very good but power of generating bombs makes it a problem to close in on him. Uchin is very strict when it comes to villains and is determined that exterminating them is the only way to create a just society. Meanwhile, Moros is done with the analysis. Kashin is a catastrophic class villain with darkness attribute and has skills of shadow knives and self-healing. The latter instantly healed the scratch on his face. Each skill also has levels, so Kashin cannot regenerate his arm or leg until his skill has reached a certain level. 
There is a hidden skill as well that Kashin has not discovered yet. The 300 magic points were a disappointment to him as he had 1500 when he was a psyker. Moros adds that Kashin has potential of catastrophic class, not that he is at that level right now. To reach there, Kashin needs to train himself. Moros then shares that he cannot use Eye of Insight for more than three times a day. If done, he would have remained unconscious for half a day. Kashin then tested his shadow knife skills and succeeded in first try, which was shocking to Moros. Villains can design their own costume and weapons, so knives are not the only option. Later, Kashin decides to go this Quan guy's home who lived with his elder sister as both parents had died. Even though Quan was destined to become one of the greatest villains, he still held his sister very close to his heart and he was not meant to die if not for Kashin's survival therefore he should take care of his sister. As he is walking, he heard an explosion from behind. Blaster has appeared and taken a mother and child as hostage in the building. Hearing that, Kashin rushes to their aid but Moro stops him saying that villains are not like the guys he fought on rooftop. They are much stronger, so Kashin plans to change to his villain form as well. However, fighting between villains is implicitly banned therefore, if he attacks Blaster, he would not only be an enemy of Psykers and Lampas, but also to all the villains out there. Even then, Kashin denies letting Blaster have his way with the hostages. This takes Moro back to the time when Jeff told him that people often think of Kashin as a person with bad temper but he has the kindest, most passionate soul. Moros chose Jeff and Jeff chose Kashin. Realizing this, Moros finally accepted Kashin's decision and offers to aid him while he is about to make all the villains out there his enemy. The building is ruined and on one of the top floors, Blaster, C-rank villain, had tied the hostages to chairs and was attaching bombs to them. Meanwhile, Uchin is waiting for his senpai at the gas station, looking at the wound on his arm that he received while blocking Kashin's punch. That's when he receives a call informing them that Blaster has appeared and they are required to immediately reach the scene. Blaster, on the other hand, attached bombs to the mother first and was about to blow her up when he noticed someone else's presence in the building. Blaster was ready to attack whoever appears, but Kashin was too fast for him, and he delivers a hard blow to his face. What Kashin did not notice was the bomb Blaster attached to him. Kashin rushed away from hostages as fast as he could. With another blast, panic grew among people. Seeing Kashin disappear from the scene, Blaster proceeds to continue what he was doing before. He charges up his left hand to blow up the mother but, in an instant, a shadow knife appeared and cut his arm right off. Screaming in pain, Blaster did not notice Kashin approaching. With a hard punch, Kashin is Blaster on floor. Blaster tries to attach another bomb to Kashin, but he was not going to fall for the same trick twice. He pins him down and delivers a hard punch right to his face. One after another, Kashin continues to punch him, loosing himself in the process until he finally hears Moros calling him out, telling him to stop. This was the state of uncontrollable frenzy in which a villain loses control over his emotions which clouds his reasoning. If Kashin did not stop, he would also have turned into a lunatic like Blaster. As he approached the hostages to free them, the fear on their faces because of him terrified him. Psykers and police have arrived and are surprised to see the hostages safe and Blaster lying unconscious on the ground. They figured that it might be some dispute over territory among villains. They could not identify the other villain but there were multiple witnesses who saw Kashin saving the hostages. Meanwhile, Lee sends Uchin to secure the CCTV footages. Kashin is still sad about the fact that those hostages were terrified of him and it was finally coming on to him that he is no longer a psyker, but a villain. A villain who is about to lose control and turn into a lunatic. Then he receives a message on Kang's phone from his sister saying that the dinner is ready. On the other side, Lee, Urchin, and police are surprised on what they saw in the CCTV footage. No matter how many times they looked, it was obvious that a villain was saving the hostages and it was his only goal. Kashin enters the apartment where Quan resides and on the table lies the food with a note from Quan's sister that told him to heat the rice. This takes Kashin to the past when he was not given dinner when he forgot about the dinner time while playing in orphanage. That's when Jeff shared his food with Kashin. He heats up the dinner and was delighted to have a meal that someone else prepared for him as they did not have one since the last time Jeff did so. The next morning, Kashin wakes up in Quan's bed facing the fact that he is going to have to live someone else's life now. As he is about to leave for school, he is stopped by Yuri, Quan's elder sister. She hands him his debit card with pocket money in it. Quan's money was stolen by the bullies and they threatened him to bring more, so Quan asked his sister and that is why Yuri was handing him the debit card. But sadly, Quan does not exist anymore and it's Kashin in his body, accepting the card. Yuri notices the different hairstyle and change in personality but laughs it off thinking that he must have gotten a girlfriend. The guys Kashin beat up yesterday, one of them was in his class, so Kashin asks him about his seat. Still afraid of Kashin, he points at his chair like a good guy. 
While waiting for the class to begin, Cashin overhears students talking about the villain versus villain battle that took place yesterday. Then they started talking about the brutal murders that have been happening lately by a serial killer called Screwdriver, who sucks blood out of his victims and chop off their arms and legs. Apparently, this monster is the boss of Vilzone in Gadam District. Meanwhile the purple-haired bully, who was the leader, Kai Hun, approached Quack Digu, another strong thug and asks him to make Cashin pay for what he did to him. He pays him to beat hell out of Cashin. Quack is mostly accompanied by another guy who is also a very dangerous and muscular guy. Upon receiving the cash payment, Quack asks for the details of this job, whether he wants Cashin to just lose a few bones or to be killed. Once the class was over, Cashin heads out but is stopped by Achen who asks about his injury. Even though Cashin's scratch has already healed, he was still wearing a bandage. He was expecting to run into Uchen during school and if Uchen had noticed his scar already healed, it would have given him a hint of Cashin being a villain. They notice someone overhearing their conversation, so they keep it short and Uchen simply asks for Cashin's name and they both part ways. Moro shares the details of Uchen and about his flame skill. Along with great looks, he is also a great student and can never turn a blind eye to injustice. In short, he is an ideal guy. From internet, it was found that Uchen's role model that he strives to be like, is the man that has same ability as him, S rank psyker, Cashin Lee. The stalkers are still following Cashin and they are none other than the two guys Cashin beat yesterday. They communicate with Quack to update about Cashin's whereabouts, so whenever he enters a secluded place, they go and settle their debt. Cashin turns toward Vilzone and all five decide to ambush him there. They lost Cashin in the streets, but our hero is not afraid of fights, so instead of being ambushed, he decides to be the ambusher. Through a camera in this street, a villain, sitting in front of the monitors, is observing the guests that have entered his territory. In this villain's hand is a screwdriver. Instead of being scared, Cashin stands casually in front of them glaring at them. Quack gives him three seconds to kneel and beg for forgiveness but Cashin just stood there, looking down on them. This triggered Quack and he approached him, bringing his face near and that's when Cashin teaches him a lesson to always keep some distance by poking both his eye and then smashing his head in the wall. The other guy charges towards Cashin with a strong punch but Cashin dodges and with one fierce kick, throws him down to the ground and knocks him out. Meanwhile Quack gets back on his feet and takes Muay Thai stance of which he was once runner-up in national level high school category. Kai Hun gets excited as he has seen Quack unleashing Muay Thai before and that means that the enemy is dead now. Then we are shown a past scene from a certain gym where John Klaus, a C plus rank psyker is indulged in a boxing training while the guys by the ring are asking John to go easy on this new kid. That's when Jack approaches the ring, the same Jack who killed Jeff. Jack also starts watching the boxing and asks why he was not wearing protective pads and the guy by ring's side answers that this rookie said he did not need any. That's when Jack surprised them by saying that he wasn't asking about the rookie but John. This rookie is a graduate from Psyker Combat Training Agency and is the youngest to have graduated at the top of his class. This rookie who specializes in close combat and have never lost a one-on-one -on -one match is named Cashin Lee. With these, Cashin manages to defeat Quack and decides to put these wannabe thugs in their place, as they can only target someone less strong than them. The strong ones do not bother to pay any mind to them. If you want to keep things right, you have to be strong. If Cashin was stronger, or Jeff or Quan, they all would have managed to escape their tragic fates. Therefore, Cashin decides to get stronger so every wrongdoer, especially Lampas, tremble in fear. The bullies were trying to look for an opening to escape from Cashin but that is when an expected appearance was made. Someone has been watching them through the cameras installed in street. That someone owned this territory and is now floating above their heads in sky, on a screwdriver. This someone is the B-plus rank villain with light skill, screwdriver. Seeing the screwdriver, everyone except Cashin ran away. He lands on ground and says that he wanted to lend Cashin a helping hand but apparently, it was the bullies who needed help. Seeing how Cashin is not surprised, let alone scared, by seeing Screwdriver in front of him, he tried to make his importance known by a head-on blast from his Screwdriver-shaped weapon. What came out of it was not a beam but a flower, he attempted to prank Cashin by trying to scare him but failed miserably. Cashin simply walked away. Cashin wants to get stronger too and for him, the best way to do so is by fighting strong opponents with your life at risk. He asks Moros to use his Eye of Insight on Screwdriver while he transforms into villain form. Screwdriver is still thinking over Cashin's fighting style and how he wasn't shook even when he tried to attack him. All of a sudden, Screwdriver was attacked from above with a deadly punch by Cashin. One after another, Cashin threw attacks at him but he managed to dodge them all, barely though, until he summons his weapon and returns the favor by charging a full-powered beam directly at Cashin. Screwdriver's magic points were over 1,000, three times greater than Cashin's and has up to five skills. Instead of scaring, Screwdriver's information spurred him on. 
back to the fight, Cashin successfully managed to block the attack with Shadow Knife while Screwdriver rushes towards him with second attack. This time Screwdriver was throwing all his attacks and Cashin was predicting all his moves and easily dodging them all. Screwdriver was suspecting him to be the same villain that defeated Blaster meanwhile, in attempt to lay a strike on him, he got close to Cashin, not knowing that close combat is his forte. He kicks Screwdriver and by dodging his next attack, he lands a direct punch on him, making him lose his footing. Screwdriver is completely overpowered but the fight was interrupted when rank a villain. Crow appeared along with multiple other villains who also resided in Villzone. Cashin mocks Screwdriver by saving that he called his underlings because he was getting destroyed while Screwdriver corrects him by saying that he did not get destroyed yet. Surprised by Screwdriver getting defeated by an amateur, they ask the reason for this fight among villains. Cashin reveals that he wanted to fight someone strong and because he cannot leave a murderer alive. Confused at his reply, they ask Cashin if he is talking about the serial killer that is on loose these days. It is just a rumor that Screwdriver committed those murders, and he should go find the real murderer. Without any evidence, Cashin refuses to believe his innocence. Meanwhile, the villain behind Cashin got triggered at his audacity and decides to put some manners in Cashin by launching a fierce surprise attack called Death Gauntlet. From behind, this villain is ranked as third strongest in Villzone. As he approaches from behind, Cashin teaches him that real men do not attack from behind by evading the attack and taking him out by a single punch. However, Cashin starts to feel a little dizzy after that. Screwdriver, using his eye gadget, tells him that it's because he used his magic points too fast. Shocked at how a villain with 300 magic points, who should just be a D rank, be strong enough to defeat B rank villains, everyone was terrified. Screwdriver explains that it is because of physical strength and quick responses along with exceptional combat skills. Screwdriver takes out a magic crystal and gives it to Cashin. A magic crystal increases the magic points when eaten. He gave it to him and proposed a deal to him. As Screwdriver is caught up with these murders, despite being innocent, he wanted to find the culprit but due to some reasons, he cannot kill him himself, so he wants Cashin to do so. There are two types of crystals. The blue one occurs naturally and is called the Jin Crystal. The yellow one is man-made and is called Magic Crystal. Obviously, Jin Crystal is much stronger and valuable compared to the artificial one. However, the man-made one is also strong and helps in increasing the spell power points. Also, they need to be ingested only in villain forms and not in human form. Cashin transforms and ingests the magic stone. After a few seconds his body starts to feel different, and a bolt of lighting emerges from him until he has finally absorbed the increased power. Afterwards, he could feel himself much stronger than before. Using Moro's Eye of Insight, Cashin saw his magic points going from 300 to 350. Cashin was disappointed that all this lightning and only an increase of 50 points. Moro's tells him that usually magic stones only increase points by 10 to 15, but an increase of 50 points is actually too good. Cashin notices that his hidden skill tab now shows a magic crystal extraction skill. Moro's elaborates that this skill enables user to extract magic points from weapons including the ones made from Jin crystals. Cashin realizes that by finally enabling his hidden skill, he has basically acquired nothing. It is a totally uncool skill. Thanks to Moros for explaining to him that once he finds weapons made from magical crystals, he could acquire as many crystals as he wants, and this skill is limited to only him. The scene shifts to a restaurant where Lee is showing off his favorite sword to Uchim, who is not even hiding the fact that he has no interest in it. He then shares that this sword is made of at least two magical crystals of the best quality. Uchin then asks about any information related to the villain who defeated Blaster, but Lee could not find anything on him. However, because of the serial killer, Gadam Goo's special team has been put on red alert. Uchin asks that if the killer is Screwdriver, but Lee denies saying that would have only been interest in some electronic gadgets, murders are not his gig. Also, villains are not the only ones who are crazy, villains can be classified into categories as well. Lee then asks about Uchin's mobile sister and he tells him that he has set a curfew until the killer is caught so be on the safer side. Uchin's sister got a bit late during photo shoots that it was already 7pm when she left the agency whereas Uchin has asked her to be at home before 7. She still has to drop by the stationery store. Meanwhile, she saw Minyoung and her model colleague and approaches her. Minyoung gets all excited on seeing her still here and after some effort, she manages to convince her to go to arcade with her. On the condition of just one game, Neon agrees. While they walk towards Arcade, in the dark alley behind, an unknown person with a grin on his face is seen to be observing them. Cashin is scrolling through internet, trying to look for any pattern or hint he could find related to the murderer. Moros reminds him about the mobile phone screwdriver gave to Cashin which only send and receive texts or files, so he could share any leads he gets about the murderer. However, Cashin's pride did not let him have casual exchange of texts with a villain. Without any plan, he moves out to search for the killer, hoping to somehow run into him. 
Meanwhile, Minyoung and Neon were casually enjoying in the arcade until Neon decides to leave, so she can be at home before 8. Minyoung was still trying to somehow get her to stay for a little more time. Neon sensed something wrong with Minyoung. Upon asking, Minyoung shares that she witnessed the murder of one of their schoolmates a few days ago and unfortunately, the killer saw her too. Neon takes her hand and rushes towards the police station as it was obvious that Minyoung will be his next target. As they try to exit the arcade, the shutters were closed and the lights suddenly went off. On the floor, they saw blood emerging from the villain standing in front of them. This murderer is a B-rank villain, Blood Rain. Cashin is aimlessly looking around from the rooftop until the phone in his back pocket, the phone given by Screwdriver, buzzes. Out of curiosity, Cashin opens the message sent to him by Screwdriver. Meanwhile, Neon and Minyoung stand in front of their deaths. Neon was given an emergency pager by his brother to be used in a situation where she needs him to come immediately. She presses the button without letting the villain notice and now all she needs to do is to stall him until Achen arrives. Even in the face of death, brave Neon does not panic and tries to stand as firm as she could. To stall, she asks the villain why he murders people, and his answer was more disgusting than one could imagine. Craving fresh blood and tearing apart hollow bodies was what satisfied him the most. With this brief answer, Bloodrain starts walking towards them. Neon starts to warn him to not come any closer and run away instead as her brother is coming and Bloodrain is too weak for him. This warning had the opposite effect, and he decides to welcome Uchin by the pale bloodless body of his sister. With that, he attacked them immediately, penetrating not Neon but Minyoung's body. While Minyoung is bleeding to her death, Blood Rain attacks Neon but luckily, someone else attacked him first. Not Uchin but Kashin arrives at the scene and launches multiple attacks on Blood Rain. He manages to dodge a few while also get damaged by a few until he takes a step back. Blood Rain and Neon both were wondering the same thing at this moment. Who is this guy? Surprised by such advanced skills, it finally hit Bloodrain that this villain must be the one who defeated Blaster. Excited upon seeing that such a dangerous villain is now after him, Bloodrain decides to postpone the fight to a later date when he could have more fun. By giving a prediction that Kashin will also die inside Bloodrain, he vanished. Kashin wanted to chase him but was stopped by Neon who wants him to save Minyo. Meanwhile, Uchin has already alerted the police to reach at the location his sister paged from. Kashin calls the ambulance and while it is coming, he asks for something stretchy to stop her bleeding and tie around the wound. She gives him the new stocking she bought, and Kashin used it to close her wound and then Moros confirmed that Minyoung will survive as long as the ambulance reaches on time. Kashin then gets up and leaves as a sight of villain is usually scary for most people. On his way back, Villain Crow approaches Kashin who tells him about the floating device that had been bothering Kashin. It is actually a drone camera operated by Screwdriver and he installed them in areas where Blood Rain was likely to appear. Through this, Screwdriver was able to locate the murderer and share its location with Kashin. She then hands over the parcel Screwdriver sent for Kashin if he made out alive. The parcel has the payment they decided, three magic stones and that too, of best quality. It was reported to news channels and police that the girls were saved due to sudden arrival of psychers as no one would believe that a villain rushed to their aid. It has been a couple of days since Kashin got Quan's body. All he could think about right now is to get stronger so he can take his revenge on Lampus. What still bothers him is the deal he made with Screwdriver as he still does not know about his true intentions. He was given three magic stones by Crow instead of one, so technically, he was overpaid. Also in the box was a GPS tracker that Kashin is free to use whenever needed. The reason for three magic stones was that Kashin has way low magic points or skill points to defeat Blood Rain. They also shared a file with him that contained possible locations of Blood Rain. What bothers him is the threat Crow gave him while leaving. She advised him not to let Screwdriver down or else be ready for what's to come. Most of Blood Rain's victims are from COA High School, so Kashin decides to look for clues there after calling in sick at his school. Meanwhile, Lee brings juice for Uchin, who stayed awake the whole night at the hospital. According to the report of last night's event, the murderer's identity is confirmed as Blood Rain. But what's shocking to them is the fact that the girls were saved by a villain, not just a villain but the same one who took down Blaster. While scouting the place, Kashin enters a supermarket and as he moved to the counter to pay for his drink, he found a familiar face behind the counter. In his human form, it was Blood Rain. While paying, Kashin notices the book, The Bride of Corinth on the counter. As Kashir moves towards the old man to help him with newspapers, Kashin and he slightly bumped into each other. The cashier apologized and Kashin leaves the store. Kashin has already noticed the eyes of Kashir. They were not ordinary eyes but the eyes of a criminal but he is still skeptical whether he is blood rain or not. 
The phrase you shall die in me that Bloodrain told to Cashin was from this book, The Bride of Corinth. Cashin follows the guy once he was done with his shift but surprisingly, the cashier did not turn towards the COA school. That's when suddenly, a car was about to run over an old man but Cashin saved him. During this rescue, Cashin lost the trail. Just in case, Cashin gets on a rooftop, transforms into a villain, and consumes all three magic stones. His spell points rose from 350 to 470. The first stone increased 50 points so Cashin was expecting another 150 but Moro shares that the increase in points is inversely proportional to the magic stones ingested. The next time he ingests a magic stone, the difference will be even lesser. It made sense to him, or else Screwdriver would not have given him any. However, Cashin gained two more skills, Hidden Shadow and Shadow Movement. Using Eye of Insight on Blood Rain, Cashin finds out that he has 1000 spell points and multiple skills including Hypnosis. Meanwhile, Blood Rain appears at the hospital where Minyoung and Neon were admitted. At the hospital, Neon is sitting by Minyoung's bed who is resting, and tries to find any information about his savior but could not find any until the doctor enters along with two male nurses and asks to take Minyoung somewhere else to perform important tests. Of course, Neon can accompany them. Meanwhile Cashin is getting a hold of the two new skills he acquired. Suddenly, his phone starts to beep it shows that Cashin is close to the GPS tracker that he put on that cashier when they bumped into each other. The location showed the hospital where both girls from last night were admitted. At the hospital, the doctors were putting Minyoung into an ambulance and when Neon got suspicious, from her behind appeared the murderer Bloodrain. Turns out, those three were hypnotized. Neon pressed the pager again, like last night. Bloodrain was interested in Neon not as his prey but her brave attitude and lack of fear piqued his interest, so he wants her to be his bride. Before he could continue, out villain Cashin makes a heroic entry and kicks him away from Neon. Raging on his appearance to ruin his fun, Bloodrain uses his skill Blood Cutter. Cashin dodges and completely overpowers him but that's exactly what Bloodrain wanted, for him to come closer so he could execute his plan, and he did, by using hypnosis on Cashin. Triggered at his audacity to try and defeat him with such a basic move, Cashin lands a strong punch to his face and pins him on the ground. Bloodrain smiles saying that Cashin will never be able to kill him. He transforms into blood form and escapes, again. The hypnosis wore off and doctor and nurses were terrified to see a villain in front of them. Knowing they are safe now, Cashin rushes to find Bloodrain as he would not have gone too far. But before he could catch up, Cashin runs into a couple of unexpected guests. Lee and Uchin were rushing towards hospital because of the pager Uchin received. Seeing a villain in front, Lee immediately takes out his sword to attack Cashin. Cashin blocks with a counterattack, asking them to move away. Uchin is still confused to attack the villain who saved his sister but then he remembers the funeral of his father and his belief that villains should be exterminated. He launches a large flame attack, but Cashin blocks it using Shadow Knife. Using this window, Lee got behind Cashin and attacks him. Barely dodging the attack, Cashin was slightly cut and this created an opening for Uchin to defeat him with a single attack. However, Neon's face came in front of him, and he spaced out. Using this opportunity, Cashin, who did not want to fight them in the first place, used Hidden Shadow skill to run away. Meanwhile, Bloodrain escaped and is found limping in a random street. Injured Bloodrain finds a club and wreaks havoc by killing multiple people and fulfilling his thirst by their blood. At the hospital, Neon tells Uchin that she was again, saved by that unknown villain. Suddenly, they receive a call about Bloodrain, so they rush out towards the club. In the meantime, Moros taunts Cashin for holding back against Lee and Uchin just because they were psychers. Cashin assures him that it would not happen again as it's not just the villains who are his enemies. He needs to get back at Lampas too. Lee and Uchin arrive at the club and their blood rain is casually sitting and enjoying a glass of blood. Not only has he healed, but he also seemed to be much stronger. Bloodrain makes the first attack which was successfully blocked by Lee. Uchin was about to use his flame blast attack but Lee stops him as there were still hostages in the club. Seeing them distracted, Bloodrain punches Lee smashing him to the wall. Within a blink of eye, Bloodrain is again in front of Lee, ready to deliver the final blow to him. Uchin intervenes by trying to use this opportunity to attack. But Bloodrain disappears from in front of him and reappears from behind, managing to use his gigantic finger blades to land deep cuts in his body. Before he could attack again, Uchin backs off. If it was not for Uchin's quick reaction, he would not have survived this attack. Uchin still could not use his flame skill because of hostages. Bloodrain then provokes Uchin by saying that after he kills Uchin, he will go for her little model sister. The provoking worked and Uchin was beaming with rage. Seeing Uchin so confident in his skills, Bloodrain decides to break his confidence first by giving him a fair chance to defeat him. He brings Uchin to a secluded place with no one around, so he can unleash his full power. 
Uchin was all ready to make him regret his decision. With a stiff and confident look in his eyes, Uchin proceeds to attack Bloodrain with all his power. Bloodrain easily dodges and counterattacks saying that Uchin is not the only one who was hiding his full power. Even with a block, such strong attacks sent Uchin flying away. Meanwhile Kashin reaches the club and finds Lee, lying unconscious. Absence of Uchin makes him realize that he must be around, fighting Bloodrain right now. Beside Lee was his sword, a magical weapon made from two magic stones. Kashin decides not to extract stones from someone else's weapon but the urge to get stronger took over him and using his skill, he extracted the stones and ingests them. The strong sensation, the mighty power, Kashin could feel it in his body, it was like he has turned back into the s rank psyker Kashin Lee. Uchin goes for another attack and Bloodrain takes it head on, showing that such a weak attack can do no harm to him. With another counterattack, Bloodrain completely showed the difference in their strengths. Bloodrain was now bored and decides to end the fight by consuming Uchin. A strange man accompanied by two girls was watching this fight, waiting for someone to show up. And that someone appears. Once again, Kashin interrupts the fun Bloodrain was having. Only this time, Bloodrain has increased his level by feasting on a club filled with people. Bloodrain is sure that at this moment, not even an S-rank Psyker could touch him. Bloodrain starts the fight with his deadly blood spears. This attack was much greater than the ones again Uchin. Kashin blocks the attack and by using Kashin's obstructed view, Bloodrain was already moving towards him for the second attack. As he tries to slash Kashin, he suddenly disappears and is now standing behind Bloodrain. From this moment on, Kashin completely overpowered Bloodrain while Bloodrain could not even see any of the incoming attack, let alone dodge it. Uchin is flabbergasted upon seeing this version of Kashin. He realizes that Kashin was simply holding back against them at the hospital. Bloodrain acknowledges that Kashin is stronger than him and tries to flee again. However, Kashin had enough of him always running away, so he used Shadowbind's skill and stopped him from turning into blood. By lighting up fire in the palm of his hand, Kashin repeated the words that he often used to say back in his days as a psyker, I will burn you to ash here and now. The next day, every news channel was broadcasting yesterday's sad event when almost a dozen people were murdered by the villain named Bloodrain. However, by the bravery of Uchin Kim, Bloodrain met his end. In the hospital, Lee praises Uchin for capturing this serial killer but Uchin refuses to accept the praise, saying he only contacted the headquarters. The one who defeated Bloodrain was actually that unknown villain with dual properties, the one who captured Blaster. With 520 magic points, Kashin has unleashed his other property along with Darkness which is Shadow Flame. Lee asks him to not overthink about it as that villain might have some other motive. He then inquires the whereabouts of his sword and Uchin tells him that it is safe with the police. Little did they know that that magic weapon is now just a weapon. At the school, Kai Hun and other bullies are discussing yesterday's events with Quack about how they were lucky to not be at club last night and to have never messed with Uchin. Kai Hun asks the whereabouts of Dong, the other muscular guy that attacked Kashin. Turns out, he was hospitalized due to orbital fracture. Kai Hun asks Quack to take revenge from Kashin but he refuses saying that he is petrified by just thinking about it, that look Kashin gave to him, it still haunts him and that he is never going to fight Kashin again. Kashin decides to go see Screwdriver once he is done with the classes to ask a few questions that are bothering him. Meanwhile, at Screwdriver's place, three guests arrive. These three are the same people who were watching Kashin take down Bloodrain yesterday. This guy is in a rank villain called Royal Garnet with Ore Property. The two girls were both a rank villains with Poison and Wind Properties. He was called here by Screwdriver and upon Screwdriver's request, he was watching Kashin in action. They defined yesterday's events as a boring movie without any plot, although the main hero was unique and special. Royal Garnet called Kashin a black diamond which is a high-level compliment. He asks Screwdriver that he intentionally sent him to watch Kashin because he knew. He knew that Kashin actually is a dual ability user. Screwdriver was just as surprised to hear that Kashin is a dual ability user. He knew there was something unique and special about him but this he did not expect. There has only been one dual ability user before, long time ago, during the Age of Myth. The purpose of Villzone is not to confine the villains but to have a neutral zone where psychers and villains would not fight each other. Kashin arrives at the Villzone and is greeted by Screwdriver who takes him to the Heaven Pub. Screwdriver then hands over two magic stones to Kashin as a reward for his last job. Screwdrivers asks how his magic points are above 500 now and whether he got his hands on a gin stone to which Kashin denies. Kashin inquires where does Screwdriver gets this from and the bartender intrudes, saying that he sells it to him. The man behind the counter is a Ranka outer with property skill, Yukiha. An outer is a psyker that isn't registered with Lampas and acts on his own free will. Kiha also resides in Gadam Vilzone. 
He is also the owner of this pub and is basically Screwdriver's brother. Cashin is interested in knowing how an outer resides with villains. However, for now Cashin has a more important thing to ask that is, if he could also buy magic stones from Kiha. Kiha nods but there is a condition. He must be a member of Vilzone. To be a member, Cashin is required to pass a test. He refuses to work under Screwdriver, but Screwdriver shares that depending on the result, Cashin could become the boss too as he is considering leaving this position. Cashin was not interested until Screwdriver shared the perks of becoming the boss, total authority, strong subordinates, a personal training room, access to magic stones from Black Market and a very generous salary. Meanwhile a B-plus rank villain, Double Blade informs Black Hand that the villain who knocked him out in one hit is at the pub with Screwdriver. Even though Screwdriver forbid fighting in pub, Black Hand is determined to break this rule to gain back the dignity he lost. Screwdriver gives a tour around Villzone to Cashin while introducing him to different villains such as Dirt Dog who likes digging and Cleaner who hates dirt. These villains are much different than the ones Cashin encountered while he was a psyker. Screwdriver shared the reason why he asked Cashin to get rid of Bloodrain, it was because there is a traitor among them. As Cashin had no links with anyone in the Villzone, he was his best bet. Screwdriver suspects that the main goal of the traitor is destruction of this Villzone. Due to this problem, Screwdriver requests Cashin to join this Villzone. Meanwhile, Yuri is called by the owner of hotel to inform her that her hard work and efficient job has led the owners of their hotel's head office to be interested in her and they have offered her to come to states and work with her. Of course, the travel expenses and accommodation will be paid by them. Yuri gets excited over this once-in-a-lifetime chance until she realizes that she cannot leave her brother, Quan, alone. Cashin is still in the Villzone, thinking about the request Screwdriver made. That's when Black Hand ambushes Cashin with Crush and Double Blade. Before they could attack, they are interrupted by Juak, a B-rank villain who stops them from going against the rules and ganging up on someone. However, Black Hand ignores saying that this rule is limited to the Villzone family. He will soon be, says Crow who is watching all this from above. Yuri comes home and tries to find Cashin but he is not home yet, so she puts her bag on the table and the offer letter falls down on the floor. The next morning, Cashin trains himself by jogging while wearing 10 kilograms weights on both arms and legs. While he was training, he did not notice the two girls keeping an eye on him. These two were the one with Royal Garnet. Cashin needs to improve because even though he is deadly when it comes to one-on-one -on -one combat, he does not do well in case of group attacks. Cashin had already announced last night that he will be taking the test in 10 days. The test comprises of one-on-one -on -one battles and his first opponent will be Juak. Back home, Cashin notices the offer letter on floor and Yuri snatches it from him saving this is not important as she is not going. Cashin assures her that he can take care of him, so she should not waste this once-in-a-lifetime chance. Meanwhile, Black Hand, Crusher and Double Blade discuss whether Cashin would actually show up and Black Hand is rooting for him to win his first two fights, so he can destroy him in the third's fight in which the opponent will be Black Hand himself. Cashin shares with Moros that he wants Yuri to go, not as Cashin but as his brother Quan, and that he has no problem in living alone, while he looks on internet, the procedure to cook rice. Yuri hangs out with her friends and drank a little too much that Cashin had to carry her to home. While he puts her on bed, she says how strange it is that she used to take care of him and now he is taking care of her. This took him back to the time when Jeff said the same thing to Cashin. A few days later, Yuri left for America. The day of test has finally arrived and Cashin's first opponent is Juak who is known for having the best defense in all of Villzone, and she specializes in one-on-one -on -one combat. There is no penalty on losing, however, if he lost, he cannot challenge Screwdriver anymore. The battle begins and Juak rushes forward with all her might. The villains are excited to see how Cashin will thrive against such a deadly opponent. Cashin uses his shadow bind to stop her and with a single kick to her face, Cashin ends the fight by emerging victorious. Everyone was shocked at seeing their top endurance fighter get knocked out like that. The second round begins immediately when an arrow is shot towards Cashin. His next opponent is Red Eye, the best sniper of Villzone. Meanwhile, a mysterious person is seen to be talking on phone, reassuring his boss that loss of blood rain is nothing to worry about and that Gadam Villzone will soon be collapsed. In Gadam, Red Eye shoots one after another arrow trying to corner Cashin while he jumps towards a building and pushes himself back by kicking it. And Red Eye uses this opportunity to rapidly fire as many arrow as he can. Cashin disappears and Red Eye thinks he has won until he appears from behind and just as he was about to attack, Red Eye yields saying he's a sniper so he could never win in a hand-to-hand -hand combat. Cashin was angered but his reason was justified as there is no need to waste time once the result is obvious. Red Eye hands him a DSP that all villains in Gadam District have. It helps in suppressing desires that could lead in loosing control. The next and final opponent is Black Hand. Seeing how strong Cashin is, Double Blade suggests Black Hand to let Crush and him accompany him against battle. 
Jiwak also advises to do so however Blackhead refuses to do such a coward act. To convince them, Jiwak shares that this test is just a showcase and Screwdriver has already decided to make him the next boss. This triggered them and they decided to gang up on him, not to defeat him but to kill him for good. Jiwak has also brought some of her acquaintances there for Kashin, who may be the king when it comes to one-on-one, -on -one, is now in serious trouble. And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word villain also subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.